Okay, welcome everybody to the Kaiko Hokianga Community Board meeting. Um, we usually start these days off with a public forum, as, as you know, because you're here. Thank you. <laughs> um, so what we do is if you're here for a funding application, you'll get 10 minutes to speak, um, including questions. If you're here for any other reason, um, you get five minutes, including questions. Um, generally, if you're, if, you're, if you're being interesting, um, generally we let you go on a little bit longer, but not too much longer. So um, I'll probably wait until you get close to the time. Okay, so Wally and John, would you like to come up and um, however you want to do it, whether you want to sit down or talk to the lectern or however you want to do it, where you go. Good morning. Welcome. Uh, Good morning. Thank you. I guess my purpose of being here is I have a personal presentation myself in regards to the local graffiti removal uh, project that's been operating, that I've been operating voluntarily for the last few years, at least more than five years anyway. And during that time, uh, I have uh, heaven to require resources. Uh, I'm, I'm here to see if you would like to, uh, I guess, raise the bar in terms of funding the actual project for the community. I just recently uh, uh, was involved with catching uh, or lifting up some kids at the Taikori Rugby Park uh, to some of the damages that were just recently done on Monday. And if you haven't already seen these pictures, uh, I've got three kids from that that I uplifted on uh, Monday and taken them back to the right places. Uh, so that's going to cost a bit of pain. Well, and, oh, I see. Sorry. And so here I'm standing again to see if we are able to uh, uh, have a look at that. And I'm going to leave it with John to speak further on that, but I guess because I've got to go. Um, and I've already recently worked with, with a, a young boy, as you know. My other role is with the Kaikawe Police as a youth development worker. And I've just recently worked with a young kid that's done some offending. So what I have done is I engaged with this young kid, did some interest, because that's all a part of it, and got him to clean some of the graffiti, which you would see in one of those pictures. And hence the reason I can engage and mentor. We put these kids on the straight and out. So that's one of my main purposes, purposes of my main role, my prime role, uh, with the police. And But this other work with graffiti, I do volunteering. And uh, so in this case, with this one recently, uh, my work is allowed to actually take this to long and do something. So that's a good thing, and that's a positive thing. But uh, yeah, it, it's ongoing. Uh, so I just wanted to point that before you and consider that uh, there are some resources required. Um, for this project to continue. I've, I've just been shoulder tapped to go and do some work in Kiki with some young people that's been offending over there. Um, so that, that's the other contribution to this and I'm able to play that role as part of a, a police news worker. So I'll leave that with you. So, uh, the other thing, sorry, is that I wanted to uh, see when COVID has locked down a few kids in their homes. So, the purpose of me standing here is some of these kids can't, you know, we're limited in going into the schools, but after school, I'm able to run some activities with these kids. So, that's the other 
our part of one day. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I haven't met you before, Alan, but I, I know all the others in the room. Oh, and the committee secretary, I don't know. Uh, um, the history of uh, Wipeout that Wally has taken over goes back to tag off days, and that was uh, Francis Tookie. And this community board, going back to um, Sally McCauley's days, you know, supported tag off uh, to the tune of um, $10,000. It was around about uh, including GST, about $1,000 a month. Once, when Francis died, there was a bit of a lull, and Wally took it up. Now, Wally's got a background in drug and alcohol counselling. He's completely and utterly committed to young people, and has been. I've known Wally ever since he came back to the Kaikou area. And um, so, and when the funding from the community board sort of dried up, Wally's taken it on. He took over the Kaikoui Rowan Marama Community Trust uh, van. We had a, uh, that was supported by the Community Trust. In fact, I think that was based in Dunedin and they bought the truck that Wally drives around in. And um, so it's set up to fight for food. That's one of the aspects. What you heard with um, Wally this morning is, um, look, he just said just this week, we've, we've got the rugby club rooms. Tag. Now we've got young people that are into expressing themselves, and they make and they're making their mark. Wally takes these people and moves them, and saying they've obviously got artistic expression. Let's move it in a different direction and not onto our buildings. So I fully support the funding application, and and this provides a funding base that allows them to do a little bit more. When you're working with government agencies. Um, they're sometimes very hard to get them to put their hands in the pocket to pull out some money just so that you can do some things, you know, providing some art gear for a young person so that we can turn them in a different direction. That can be harder to get and more paperwork than what you've got in front of you. Um, so the community board supporting Wally, uh, you, you're, you're absolutely guaranteed with a person that is 100%, in fact, I'd say 100% honest in everything that he's doing, you can see it's part of his job. He's back with the police doing that new development. It's, it's an amazing uh, uh, job that he's got and what he's doing in the community. Uh, I thought went somewhere and I got sidetracked. Uh, I'm happy to take any questions, but I'm here to support that work in this community. And uh, sorry, the last point I would but say is um, the cost of uh, graffiti removal essentially has been you know, if you support them, it's been supported through the rates because very few people are actually putting their money in, their, their hands in their pockets to actually get the graffiti taken out. Now, if you if you were to get uh, your contractors to do it, uh, you'll be paying whatever their daily rate is or their hourly rate and their costs from wherever their base is to wherever it's got to go. It's an expensive exercise. The, when the community steps up and says, we'll take responsibility for it, it is very, very economical for your community. So it's a, it's basically community response to a community risk, uh, problem. And that's my support for Wally, and particularly the Kaiko Romano Trust in Umbrella, if any funding is made available. Thank you. Cool. Any questions for John? Yeah. Louis. So like in our community, we plan to paint the murals, and, and I talked to you about that before. Well, like, like, once you sort of, okay, you're trying to ignite the interest in those graffiti artists to put their talents to work and paint big murals. Once, once they take those on, there's a little chance that they would get tagged. And, you know, I know the one that down the little lane where got tagged a couple of times. Yeah. But there, there is sort of remedies for that by sort of right. anti-tagging paint. I agree. And, and then be wiped off. Yeah. Now the community board in the past has given money towards helping those sort of projects get off the ground. Is there, are you looking at that as a main way of trolling? It's always been looked at. You know, yeah. it's, it's about the parties getting involved. You know, the, um, it, in some respects, you know, this is a situation where the ratepayers, you know, and the citizens are putting the money up, yeah. but we've got government agencies that also should be putting some money up. 
Um, you know, they've got a vested interest in changing the direction of young people. That's um, uh, Child Youth and Family. Um, that's the police. That's uh, Ministry of Youth Affairs. They've all got a vested interest in giving young people a new steer, but there's a bit of work in getting all those people in a room and getting them to put their hands in their pockets. So yeah, I've got a question, probably more for Wally than you, John. Yeah, absolutely. No, in, Wally's in, the mayor. In your opinion, Wally, do you think graffiti is a gateway crime to ram raiding? Well, I, at least since I called on Monday, they apparently said I was bored, didn't like school. So these kids were sitting in the grandstand and they didn't run because I knew them for the start, so they had nowhere to go. So I just picked them up and I didn't realise that the club had been graffitied until after I dropped them back at school. And then I thought, well, oh, Cheryl, between myself and Cheryl Smith, uh, I went back there to check, and you can see the picture, and that's what they had done. Uh, they couldn't deny it because they had it all over their clothes and their shoes. And I said, you can't deny this, you did it, and that's it. So there needs to be some responsibility and accountable to... So as we speak, we're working with the school because they are more so in this because of the kids of maturity. And uh, that's a big thing at the moment that the government's looking at. So I don't know where the funding for that is going to be, but I heard there's going to be millions of dollars brought out for that reason. And it may be something you as a board can, uh, perhaps can look at that, uh, in that area of funding, because that's what you said publicly anyway. Yeah, yeah. We're I think the key point here is, is that uh, I can engage with these kids, like John said. I can. I need to set something up. I have very good networks in the community to actually do workshops. I've done it in the past, but it's, uh, these people need to be funded too. So I guess it, it, rather than coming out of my pocket, but it, it, that's not any everything to me because I'm currently working anyway, earning my way. So. Uh, I think it's about engaging these kids and putting them in the right direction and say, hey, no, this is not right, because how many people are affected? And, um, and so we're working with that at the moment. But yes. Yeah, okay, so, so, so why do you answer my question? I, mean, I, mean, I, I get, the, I get the, the feeling that the motivations are the same. Okay, so do we, have we had any ram raids in Kaiko? Do you know what? Well, we have a uh, minority of, of kids on that. Oh, the ram, 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 do, do we have any ram raids in Kaikoui recently? Oh, no. no. Okay, cool. No, sorry. No, just, just wondering. That's fine. Okay, George. Yep. You can organise some. <laughs> no. The question of, of, of Wally, and then I'd like to explain Ramanama as yep. well. Yes, yes, yes. Yep. So, so, because I'm conflicted. Um, well, maybe. But just, just Wally, uh, you mentioned Kirikiri and Rafiki. Would it be an advantage uh, for council to give you some of those graffiti removal contracts off their buildings? Given what you're doing, it would seem that you generate mm -hmm. an income and can you actually handle such a thing? Well, I, I, I'm really gracious now that my employers uh, are happy for me to work with these kids in my time, which is during the day. So if these kids are not engaged in school, I'm able to pick them up and go and do some work with them. And, and that's the beauty of where it's at at this time. Thank you. Thanks, Wally. Mm -hmm. And we know what's happening in town really is shooting, so it's really important to deal with the youth. But just Ramanama's role is, um, which I'm on, on Ramanama, so I won't be voting on this for that, for that reason, but it's purely uh, acting as bank as we do with uh, some of the housing initiatives as well. So not one dollar is taken out of that. It's all given to, you know, Wally, so it's effectively giving a um, uh, a charitable trust cover over what the, the, the work that Wally is doing, just so everybody is clear. Uh, so and that's why it's mentioned in there. Um, and we'll be responsible for making sure that Wally reports and these things like that. Yeah. So anyway, so, um, okay. so that's the role, and I'll abstain when it comes to that. So, okay. Yeah. Right. We're, we're we're out of time. We'll give uh, we'll give Emma one more question. Uh, thank you, Wally, for the good work that you do. Um, and I'm quite pleased that you've actually taken those kids back to the school. Now, are the principals going to do something constructive? Yes, I received the email as well. Yes, they're taking responsibility because it was a truant in case that the kids were out, out of school. 
So, and that's what they, they have their policies and procedures the way that they deal with it. But I'll be a part of that too as well. Very good. Yeah, yeah. good. Great Thank stuff. You. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ray Wernick, would you like to join us? Morning, everybody. Um, I'm Ray Wernick, Slick, the Station Manager. Um, we are from Far North Land Search and Rescue. And we, um, well, thank you for hearing us, but we re sublease the building at Rescue Airport as our base from Coast Guard. They have advised us that they are negotiating to move and they will only give us, or only have to give us, one month's notice. Hence the panic to try and cover ourselves to get, in, to get the club rooms for ourselves. Um, Farmers Holdings, we have been in touch with them and they have indicated that they will negotiate the cost, but they won't negotiate until Coast Guard give their notice. So we're stuck with, I think it's $14,250 plus GST plus rates. Plus. Um, so we're coming to the three boards to try and cover that. If we can negotiate down, obviously we're not going to need that amount of money. Um, the other, other point I want to raise is that since lodging our application um, in May, just this last month, we had, we've had four searches, two of them being one in Weimar, which we arrived at the scene at 6pm and worked through to 1pm, went home, got that five hours rest and then went out the next morning and the lady was located at lunchtime. Well, she'd slept under a log and she was, she was fine, which is really one of our best outcomes that we can hope for. And the second one, the very next week, was at Waimamaku. And I'm sure you probably have read a little bit about that. And we were out there helping the police for two days, searching for that baby. And not such a nice outcome on that one, but closure for the family, which is what our goal is. Either way, um, we were called out the following week to Hihi, and a trapper was missing. And he'd been out, he left home at seven in the morning and had been out overnight. We had a good outcome from that one as well. And we also assisted the um, police, not in person, but we provided equipment such as kayaks for a river search in Kirikiri. So whilst we weren't physically there, and all our equipment went to the police. So that's just in the last month. Um, we're also, I have a new client. One of the things that we do is wander search, and I don't know if any of you know about that. We have some brochures here, and it's for people with cognitive, um, what's the word? <laughs> challenges. Yeah, challenges, and they might wander off and the family can't find them, and my youngest, Client is five, and I think my oldest one is in their 80s. Um, and I've just issued a wander heat search pendant to a lady in Ormanaya. We don't charge for that service, it is a cost to us, but we, it is something that we do because we believe if they get lost and we can track them quickly, it's a pendant with a radio frequency, we can track them quickly, it helps us. So um, I think that's. Would you like to just spend a few minutes telling us about the organisation and how it fits into all of the other... All the others? All the others, yeah, because that, that'll, that'll set the context for us. Sure. Nick and I have just been to a, a REPS meeting in Auckland um, just this weekend to, uh, with all the other Northland REPS and the general thing is that we have a poor relation in the uh, searching industry. Um, but um, Land Search and Rescue Volunteer hours over the last year equal seventeen million dollars. Yes, yeah. so 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 what I mean I guess it's just it's just what do you do? So forget forget about your notes. Okay. Get forget about your notes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You've met a new person at a at a dinner party. Okay, and, and they say land search and rescue. What is that? 
Okay, so so just 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 dinner party conversation. Away yeah. it goes. So basically, um, we're a group of volunteers. We're a diverse group of volunteers. We come from all sorts of backgrounds, all sorts of um, skills that they bring to it, right from just the tramping skills through to GPS, it's all sorts of skills people have got that they've used within their own personal life. And our aim is just basically come together, get a group of people, and we literally are out to search for people. So we get a call from the police, that call then comes down the tree, everybody, all the volunteers reply, we then get a staging area and we literally go out to a search. We could be there anything from half a day to three, four days. We get called at any time on 24 hour call out. So the call could come evening, early hours of the morning. It's just completely random. We, we train regularly, so we're all fully skilled. Um, and we basically, yeah, we, we just get called to all, all funny hours. Okay, so so you are a you are a recognised resource and expertise um, by yes. by other organisations who get paid big, big money to do it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we we're all fully funded. We have to fund everything ourselves that we want. So if we want new equipment, we have to fund it. Anything that we within our group want is fully funded. Um, yes. Yeah, so we we so basically have, yeah we don't get sort of anything given as such. Okay, right. Any we questions? need these flash t-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> well, They've given to us. I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you've got plenty of money here. <laughs> okay, right. I've got any questions from the floor, from the yeah. um, members? Yeah. How, how many volunteers do you have on your... At, at this point in time, because um, we've got 26 um, active volunteers, um, we were down to 22 because of the mandates, because we mandated um, with the health. But yes, yeah, so at the moment, well, we've actually got three in training, so counting them, we've got 26. And of those 26 we've got, we have got the second largest search area in the whole of New Zealand. We have the largest coastline search area in the whole of New Zealand, of all the other groups. So we start pretty well from about Hikarangi, straight coast to coast, right to the top. That's our area. Same district as you've got, basically. Yeah. So do you get, I mean, like, Let's say you're called out <coughs> to the top of the North Island somewhere. Yep. Okay, that's a, that's a two hour drive with all of your equipment. At least, yep. Okay, with all the petrol and, and di in other words, direct expenses. So it's, it's, at that point in time, yep. you are paying to rescue somebody rather than paying just to be uh, be available, right? Pretty well. And, and are you able to invoice that to anybody? The police give us. Um, cover the fuel. Cover the fuel. Okay. So we, yep. we put an uh, application in a. Depends on the size of your car, and I think my car is 60 cents a kilometre. Okay, so yeah, I was just wondering, so things like that. Where yeah, so yeah, please reimburse us for travel. Okay, that's great. So okay. That's it, yeah, we let everybody else gives up their time. And... Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Sean? Yeah, uh, I. Two questions. Um, first one is why do you need the building? That probably will be answer, answer that one, so quick, the quick answer. And the second thing, and this is sort of, um, I've got a brother-in-law who lives in, lives in land, uh, you know, land search and rescue. They got called in because they're based in Christchurch into the uh, earthquake emergency in Christchurch. So do you get called in if there's an emergency into other air functions as well? Or is that just a bit of an unusual one? We are available, but we in the North haven't been called in with civil defence mm -hmm. yet. Okay. That was a big discussion last weekend, um, some do and some don't, but yeah. we are... Well, we haven't had too much. We haven't now. had, unlike in a flood, which is our most yeah. common one, um, we wouldn't get called. Yeah. The reason we really want the need or want the club rooms is we've got nowhere to meet. Um, we've got another story of quite much. At the moment, because we were actually told that we only had a month, we've pulled most of our gear out of the club rooms at the moment. So I've got stuff stored in my shed, another member's got stuff stored in their shed, another member's got clothing stored in their house. We're just all scattered. And because we're a little group, we feel like we need, need our place. It sort of becomes a little disjointed else. We've got bits everywhere and we want to collate everything so that it's all there when we go and meet. For whatever call that we get, we can go, right, we need that, we need that, we know, rather than ringing people and saying, make sure you bring this with you, make sure you bring that, or, or for instance, 
this person that has this piece at their place doesn't come to the search yes. and somebody has to raise that to pick up this equipment to bring it back. I, so, I, I know there's something special about being at an airport. Does it need to be at an airport? That is where Farnells Holdings has the building. It doesn't yeah. have to be there. No. It's just that's the building that's going to be available. Okay, yeah. And yeah. suits our needs. It's got parking because we only take as many cars as we need, so we leave our other cars there. Yeah. It's relatively safe. Yeah. A few years back, we were also, we did the YES program at the Youth Emergency Services. So we did, when that was out, we did that a couple of years as well. We were involved in that. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mrs. Chairman. If we can save one life, it's worthwhile. Yeah. Before Raymond's time even, a RAF fighter pilot got lost in Booker T. And Alan Gamble, who was Billy Hutchinson's job of counsel, led research and rescue, and they saved that man. And he was experienced in survival. And he was in the third day before they found him. So did he pull out of a plane? Or they they did a wonderful job. They found him in the end, but he was extremely lucky. And, and as I say, he was trained in survival and got lost in the pocket It was so easy. Was, it, was that one a leisure trip or was it he fall out of an aircraft? What was that then? Was, was that a leisure trip? Was he just wandering through for leisure or did he fall out of an aircraft? So long, I didn't mind. Okay. Just one of the things I'd, I'd just like to brag about is that um, we were involved with the Brian Dent search in Angarei. We join up with Northland if they need more people. And we have won the Supreme Award for the work we did there. Um, and one of our guys has just been down to Wellington to see that same Sunday, so we're proud about that. Excellent. Oh, okay, one more. Hang on. Oh, sorry, there yeah, are two more questions, then we're done. So, Kelly first. So, if you get the funding that's going to see you through for this year, what's your plan for next year? Have you thought that far? Yes, we have. We can breathe. If yeah. We can get to, that, that's basically why I've come here quickly, because hopefully it's, it can be given to us quickly. And then we've got a year to start applying to um, lotteries or Foundation, Northall, wherever, and but it gives us breathing space. So, all through COVID and Rona, did you guys pay full rent to Farnworth Holdings? Because we were on call outs. You know, no, I just, the reason I ask is because not very many other organisations paid full rent to Farnworth Holdings. They got they got massive discounts. We sublease. Coast Guard pay full rent and we sublease off Coast okay, Guard. Okay, so did so we still pay our rent, yes. Okay, so okay, now I'm just wondering whether we should go to Sun of Holdings and say, hey look, these guys paid their full rent through Corona. That Give them a break while they go through their own crisis, right? Yeah, no, we, okay, we sublease so, off Coast Guard, so um, can you know that or we'll we'll send well I mean I'll I'll send a letter personally to yeah. to Sun Final Holdings and see if we can get some kind of recognition of your Yeah, my question was around that as well. Like, 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 you provide a valuable service to our community, like the police, the, the ambulance, and, and the fire. Is there some way of have you tried looking at getting funding direct from central government or local authorities? Like, like, like sort of, you know, you provide a service like farmers holding should reduce the rent or give it to you free, you know, through council. They have indicated they will negotiate it with us, so yeah. that's okay. just on the table at this point. We do get um, $15,000 a year for the next three years from Northland Regional Council for equipment, equipment only. Yeah, it's only equipment, so we can um, allocate that's it to anything else. between us and Northland. Yeah. So, okay. so, so basically all your other costs are covered except for the rental of this building that you yes. have to do. Yes. So, you know, I think okay. that should be a way of Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. We will have a robust discussion sometime. Thank you. If you know anyone that needs help, yeah, certainly. I'll go looking on the bushwalks to see if they're going to do it. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Judy. Judy. Uh, good morning. Um, 
I'm Jenny McDougall, this is Judy Cartwright, we're from the Manaki Tilani Trust, which runs Hokianga Community Gym in Rawani. Um, so we're here, thank you for the opportunity to speak. We're here to speak to our funding application, but just before we start, I just wanted to point out there's been an omission in the agenda that can be put in front of you. And that is that when we did our application, it's included in the agenda, but our volunteer hours were not included. They were in our original application, but they're not in your agenda. Thank you. So um, if you look on page 24, there's a recommendation that you only get half of what you applied for because the volunteer hours are said to have not been included. But they were, Judy's just handing them out. And then if you look on page 59, there's an acknowledgement that the volunteer hours were included. I hope that cool. makes sense. Okay, we, we understand that. We understand okay. that. Yeah. So what I'm asking is when you make your decision, if you would take that into account yeah. and we, consider right. paying us the full amount. Yeah. If you're going to. Okay. Uh, so this is our application is we are part of Hokianga Community Gym, but the, we also um, are an over 60s women's exercise group which is held in Rowley Town Hall um, twice a week. And what we're applying for is a large screen TV to run exercise clips on. We do have volunteer tutors who run our exercise sessions, but it's really good to have exercise videos as well. And at the moment, we're just using a little laptop seated on a chair on top of the stage, and we're all trying to see that. So if we could have a large screen TV, it doesn't have to be a TV, just a monitor, but TVs were cheaper than monitors we found. Then we can run exercise clips and everyone in the hall can see them quite clearly. And then the idea of the stand is that TV's mounted on the stand so it's easy to move. Yes. Yeah. We also um, would like to use that same monitor for training purposes because um, we, you know, we are in fact running a business, a not-for-profit business, for playing a community gym, and so we keep having to bring our trustees up to speed um, with Gmail and with Google Drive and various training things online. So it could be multi-purpose, and the third use would be we've got real capacity issues. That's why we're hiring a Rowley Town Hall as well. You know, if we can't fit in the gym. Um, one day we'd like to get another building and then that monitor would be shifted to that building mounted on the wall and then could be used more extensively this time. Right, any questions? How many volunteers, how many treated volunteers do you have? Within the over 60s women's group there's about 15 in the class. Sorry, was that how many tutors do we have? Oh, that, that varies from month to month. Um, I would say we have 10 hardcore volunteer tutors. They are not always all available. Yeah. So the, the having video clips would be a good call there. But we also have guest tutors. We had one this morning. We've just come from that session. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. So we have, but the, no tutors are paid. They are all volunteers. And some of them might only be available once every three months or something. And just so you know, I, I did find the 17 oh, in the notes and Yeah, we, we have. I was a bit worried. We, <laughs> we, we we're quite good at reading. <laughs> we, had, we had a big discussion before we started this morning. Oh, that's yeah. okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, I have one. Look, I like what you do. You. Have you thought of actually combining with the hall committee? and have a permanent board put up in the hall because it's such a big place and I knew you know and I know that you sometimes meet there we do meet there yeah twice a week so have you ever thought of actually combining with the hall committee Judy's I mean on we've on got one committee. person here that's on the hall committee so so is Judy oh, okay <laughs> what do you think Judy um, I think that's an excellent idea and I'll give it some serious thought at the moment I feel it would be better for to have our own equipment that we can then move to where we have our evening committee classes for training purposes and I'm not sure whether the hall would like it removed from the hall if they co-own it. I, th that's just a small problem that I can foresee. I'm not saying it's insurmountable. That's a good point. Thank you. Okay. Can I just, can I just say one other thing? Yeah. 
there's so many concerns in Raoni at the moment about security and break-ins and so on. And of course, the TV is quite an attractive thing. Yeah. Um, we plan, if we get funding, to store it in the music room, which is a locked room off the wall, and it will also be changed to the wall. So to get at it, you'd need to have a key to the wall, a key to the music room, and a key to the catalog. Okay. Awesome. All right. I was going to ask, what, what, what about the security on the TV? So oh, you've answered that question. Read your mind. And, yeah. and the other question I had was, uh, slipped my mind. Uh, oh, with regard to um, joining up with the Hall Committee, and I, I'm on the Hall Committee as TV is, what use would the Hall Committee have for a TV? Um, they may be able to hire it out if they had say a council meeting and they wanted to do projection. I don't know, I'd have to ask them. Okay. Actually, that's a great idea. You know, if we if we got a great big <laughs> great big TV on the Rowany Hall we hire it. Hall, and then and then when we go in there we just pay massive amounts to use the TV. It'll pay itself off, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. Then it wouldn't come out of our money, it'd come out of Marlene's money. <laughs> This could be a can of worms, Louis. Yeah. yeah. But it is a valid point. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Is that your No. Neil. Oh. Hi, I'm Neil, and this is Rufus, and we have a with us from the Minnesota Association. Thanks for your time. Um, we're here today to talk to you about a uh, potential for a Brownie area men's shed, um, and uh, the need to um, start a process where we can understand whether it's feasible to set one up, get it running, and get some help to break through the kind of conversation that's been going on in Brownie for a couple of years now about the potential benefits and interest there is in having a men's shed in the area. So uh, we can talk through two or three options and Rufus and I will answer any questions that you've got. Okay, just, now just before you start, okay, you've got eight people here who all know what a men's shed are and they love the idea. So you can move past the idea of selling the idea of a men's shed, okay, right. and on, on, on to, on to your version or your your vision for Rowan. You don't have to sell the idea of men's shed. Good. That's good. <laughs> because we're used all the time just doing that. Um, so I think I think the, the challenges, if you like to put it that way around, are, are that um, Rowan area, and this could be Rowan, Rowan area or in the South Hokianga, is a rural community dispersed. And so uh, men's shed is a well established idea, as you kind of said. Um, we need to um, get through the idea whether it's feasible to run one in Rowley, whether we would get the right mix of members involved, regularly attending, we could service the needs that there are in the community, whether that is older men who are perhaps out of work and looking for social contact and stimulation, or younger people who may need the benefits of not formal mentoring, but the opportunity to engage and share skills and things like that. And also um, in a small area like we have, what is the right kind of location and premises and way of operating a men's shed that would be appropriate to the Rowany area, as opposed to uh, in other places in Northland like Kerry Kerry and Kaitaia and Panaray, where there are men's sheds, but they're sitting in larger towns uh, with access to facilities and <coughs> sensors and equipment and so forth like that. So um, Rufus and I spent the last few months talking around in the community. There's been lots of chat on the Realm Facebook page and things like that. And basically uh, two or three things came out that if we can get a, we have, we're putting together a working group now of people. And if you think about the range of skills that you need to talk about and knowledge of equipment and facilities and things like that, people can take forward the idea. Uh, secondly, actually, to be able to be part of the National Men's Shed Network, we need to incorporate formally as an organisation with a primary purpose of social well and well, mental well-being for men particularly. And so we need to get traction in getting that going, getting members involved. And thirdly, because of the area, uh, we've understood from the National Men's Shed movement that we should really be looking at similar or comparable men's sheds in rural areas 
as opposed to those in the urban centres. And yeah, you know, you can look on YouTube and things at different men sheds and we put some clips in, but actually the way they run, the way they operate, the physical location and stuff really it's a kind of face-to-face -face conversation in some detail with the people who have set up and are operating those sheds. So um, what we really wanted to do was to get some support from the board to break through the discussion and to get into some real look at whether it's actually feasible to set a shed up with the costs associated in facilities and equipment and tools and whether it would be viable to run one in the area. And so that we put the proposal forward for you today. Okay, any questions? Kevin, you start. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying about, you know, going and looking at something, but I don't I don't really understand why you have to travel to the Wairarapa to have a look at a men's shed when Kerry Kerry already has one that already functions that you, and their network can be. And why is the Wairarapa or the Manawatu, why are they the same as Rawani? So what... The two, two parts. Yes, there are the men's sheds in Andre, Kerry Kerry, and we're in contact with them. And um, in terms of knowledge of how they've operated and the way they've collected the resources together, that's true. You know, they are there and they're already available to us. When we contacted the Men's Shed National Network, uh, Dan Cordhead is the regional rep for, for the North, and they're saying actually, um, over and above that, in the rural areas like in uh, the South Wairapa and the Manual 2 and stuff, there are maybe not exactly the same as Rawani, but smaller communities with the dispersed group. And there's only 500 people in the Rawani township, you know, compared to tens of thousands in, in the Wairapa areas. And so they said, look, actually on site, feasibly looking at it, meeting the people who've set it up and running it and understanding the way that it's operated will give a lot better additional insights than talking to the larger urban towns. Um, as that chairperson said, you, you know, we did have a discussion this morning and yes, it was good, it was positive. Um, and I have similar views to, you know, to our board member here, Kelly. Um, I wouldn't want to have money spent on travel, but have you thought of the politic? Yes. And using one of the buildings there? Yes. So you don't need to go and get one. I mean, the council is responsible for that. So yeah, there's there's been a lot of um, investigation into that, and they're not. They they actually offered a space that wasn't really suitable, um, to, not to us, but to previous people trying to get the men's shed concept going. Um, there is a building at the bottom of the Polytech, which would be ideal, but they have already earmarked that for training courses. So they're not prepared to have a men's shed at Polytech. Okay. Another thing stage. that I hear, and it may sound, you know, the word men's shed sometimes sounds very sexist. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and there are a lot of women, you know, who live in the Ramadi district who do quite a bit of work there. Yeah. So, so quite a number of the men's sheds do. Uh, so it's down to the members to work out what the articles are in the men. It, it was, initially developed for the benefit of men who were isolated, but I agree with you. And so it's actually quite, a, there are men's sheds who have women members, if you like to put it that way around, or, or, and that's open for discussion about what's best for the area and who would take part. And as you said, in the community, also um, some women, one woman in particular was saying she's very interested in upholstery and so forth and learning skills to do to do that kind of thing and, and being able to take part. So I think it's for the local community to work out what the member should be, what the range of different activities and things that it should service. Although, and I'll, this is where I'll differ from my colleague here, I mean, yeah, the primary purpose of a men's shed is to <laughs> men's mental health, mental health yeah. right? I mean, yeah. and, and, and the things around it are a means to that. Yeah. Okay, so for somebody to say, I'd like to learn upholstery, that's one thing. Uh, but is, is, is it for your mental health or is it for to learn upholstery? And then maybe there's a, maybe there's a better place to, you know, may, maybe rather than changing the purpose of a men's shed, and you, you, you just have to say, look, yeah, yeah, it's got men in the name. And yeah, um, you know, if you want to put it like that, it's sexist, but you know, men do have a different needs for mental health. Uh, and yeah. we often forget those needs. So um, anyway, but, but that's but, but you've asked the question, right? You know, well, but what are the forces and how how you would do it? I'm not, I'm not trying to guide you. I'm just no, trying no, no. to say 
I know that, that they're from a mental health point of view, my men do have a different different need. Uh, really. Yeah, uh, your application has come through RARA. I you're basically under their umbrella, basically not <coughs> a registered entity yet. When you become incorporated, you will be applying for, possibly applying for future funding through your own organisation. Yeah, I think that's the whole idea. Um, and to the, to the previous point, as you said about uh, men's health, that often the services that are provided in men's health, men's sheds, would include local health visitors and people being able to come and talk with men in a space which is uh, comfortable for them, if you like. So that's to that point. I think this is very much the idea. Yeah, Louis, that um, the circles that we're going around in to get support from the National Men's Shed Network, you have to be incorporated to be able to get that. You have to have a primary purpose of working for men's health. And so the Residents Association has supported this application so that we can get incorporated, get the members together, get going and understand what those issues and challenges are so that we would um, in future come back. And as you'll all understand, it's potentially quite an expensive undertaking to put a men's shed in place. And so this is just the first few steps in. Yeah, yeah, so John. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I have a question. We, you mentioned Meadow 2 and Waikato. Those uh, district council areas, so to put it in the context, it wouldn't be Rami, it'd be the part of the district council. So I'm just wondering, uh, you know, if you're going to do that research, isn't there an opportunity to look at maybe making men's sheds in the whole farm of district council? You know, is that what you're going to be learning there? Surely would be applicable, and how does it actually work? Because we are more rural, if you like, than both Waikato, which has got Hamilton. And, and um, you know, what was I going to mention? Maybe, maybe that's what's uh, not, not as, rural, as rural. So we're actually quite rural. So I'd, I'd like to know, because it's been mooted about uh, men's shed in um, Piney Village as well. So how you pull those pieces together is going to be a challenge. So I'm just wondering if you've given that sort of consideration. You know, they're looking at a rural area and then saying this is applicable for Oganga or South Oganga or Rowley. It doesn't yeah. quite fit the scale you're looking at. Yeah, these are, these are the big questions that we hope to answer. Yeah. yeah. And I think, uh, so you, we, we put an email through to David, the regional rep, and kind of said, look, you know, this comparison with Andre or with Cup yeah, and stuff, as you said, and within a couple of hours, the, the reason that Manawatu and Marapa came through was that Murray, who is the regional rep around there, immediately replied and said, yeah, we have access to that information, that knowledge for those people who've run them in more rural areas. And so as you said, if, if we have people from the working group, not necessarily Rufus and I going, setting up in that discussion, as you said, it would be to come back to the community board with that information yeah, so and, and to say, because that's the test, is this just going to be feasible for a small uh, population so, in, a, in a dispersed area to, to be able to do this? You yeah, say so it would be amenable then to take that information mm. sure. and uh, take it further, like Kerry mentioned, which is quite quite good, I understand the way it's working. But Kerry is just, just a small rural town when you compare it with you know, the likes of Hamilton and, and some of these places. It's also a wealthy small town. It's a wealthy small town. Yeah. Yeah. Like <laughs> so, oh, right, it's yeah. quite wealthy. <laughs> so there's other things like uh, in Karakiri, you know, the facilities of like placemakers pretty much next door and being able to access people who are operating those businesses and get a local sponsorship and things and you turn around and you say, well, that's possible for an area like Brown as well, but we're already, you know, on the other side of the, the area or how do we um, get that kind of sustainable support in an area where actually those employers and those businesses aren't physically that, you know, we all run across to or across the Kankari and to do that kind of service. Yeah. Um, Fund Array has offered a bunch of tools and equipment to us, but we haven't got anybody in the team at the moment to appraise whether it's the right stuff, you know, it's good stuff to have. <laughs> Things like that. So we just need to, to work through. And even, even if we took it, we haven't got anywhere to store it. Yeah, we, we also have um, <laughs> private money sitting on the sidelines waiting to come in. If we can kind of get this chicken and egg problem solved and, and form an incorporated society and, and have, a, have a proper entity for that private money to be able to go into. To your point, there was a, a family who have had a, a, an unfortunate circumstance related to men's health and they've made um, an endowment available through their family trust, but it's on the basis that we can get a shed going um, and it could be pretty substantial. Yeah, you have a question. So, um, if we don't fund this trip, are you still going? Well, I think 
the, the need is to be able to get that information right. And um, so are we still going it would fall on the individuals to decide how they would fund that kind of op trip? Um, and um, so as I said, it's not that it's Rufus and I necessarily the ones that would be going. Um, an example to your point about the physical thing was um, about just the way in which they operate in terms of health and safety practices, for example. And um, one of the ones that's uh, a link in the, in the tube is one of the first ones that was set up as a custom design thing. But apparently, um, when you go, there's people with all kinds of badges, and it's really run a very strict and uh, kind of almost authoritarian type of regime. And we were going, well, I can't imagine in the rally area that would be an acceptable culture, you know, for the way that it would have to operate, or it has to meet the requirements. So that, that feel for the place and how it would pop up. I see you've got a large line item donated. Um, for facilitation and consultation, I think, or some expertise there. What is that all about? So but there's about there's a line item for seven thousand dollars yeah, yeah. for you. Yep. So so um, over and above any uh, volunteer time, yep. I'm giving my program in time. It's what I do for profession. Oh, you okay? Yeah. Yeah, and, and your profession is? So I'm a change management consultant. Yep. Um, for these kinds of organisations, not necessarily mentioned, but I work for ACC WorkSafe, ShopCare nationally, and organisations like that. So I live in the community, it's part of what I, I'm doing. It's not a position, but so where ordinarily um, organisations may come and ask funding questions, kind of facilitation, yeah, okay. I'm doing it in time freely. Okay. Just one more question. Have you actually spoken beyond you know, Online interest is, is one thing, but face to face, have you actually spoken to the different communities of interest within Rawani? Um, I'd say anecdotally, but we need to, um, it's, um, we're putting in this application and then if this goes forward, we're planning to pull everyone together um, and, and, and see who's going to form this initial group that'll do the, the research and eventually have to have to build a shed. Yeah. Um, we just um because the hospital yeah. itself plays a large part in Ravani, right? And I know that it means evenings, they have women's evenings, so yeah. Have you actually spoken to the So so Neil's spoken to a lot of people at the pool club, which is one of those yep. unofficial meeting spaces. Um uh talk of the um Dallin and the church. Um, but we haven't officially put the call out and said this will come together and yeah. and, and form this group yet. Um, whether whether we're doing it the right way around, going for the funding and then pulling in the group, or try to pull in the group and then go for the funding, or well, there's sort of people like Renee sitting here, yeah, the right. and, 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 and the different and, groups, and, and the different yeah. groups, and that's what we've done. We've gone on and spoken with them individually, and we've also had a kind of couple of collective meetings with those people to work out some paper you've got with the. Kind of initial options and things are developed from those those conversations right um, and to your point earlier about the polytech and stuff that's that's the work that has to be done is to kind of not just say oh yeah could you get a room but actually would that be the right choice feasibility a couple of our comments in there where people said yeah that's available but it would be possible to refurbish that than it would to put something new in place so you're actually paying for somebody else's repairs rather than using money in the best way let alone that politics or whatever that might be involved. So as um, as Rufus said, the next step would be to really say, look, so there's some support to move forward on this and cut around the circle that's been going on for two years and say, actually, we've got some backing to go ahead and do this. Now, I'm going to get behind this and I can go with us on the screen. Great stuff. We'll wrap it up here. Thank you very much. Thank you. And finally, Renee. Do you want to take one? Uh, thank you. I'm rep representing the Okeana Sailing Trust, and we have a request today for an outboard mode. At the, the moment, we have two outboards. One is a 15 horsepower, one is a 8 horsepower. We had a third one, 8 horsepower, but that uh, stopped working, and the other 8 horsepower we have now at the moment is not very reliable either. And we found out that for rescue and for safety, the 15 horsepower is far better. Because we have, as the district is done, because we have uh, 
fall victim to our own success with the sailing. There's a lot of people coming to sail. Many Sundays we have 10, 12 boats out and we follow the New Zealand guidelines for boating where per six uh, dinghies you have to have one rescue dog. So we need two boats on the water per minute where one is actually doing just rescue and the other one is instructing. Um, we have found that often we are too late where we are needed. The tides are very strong in Okinawa, and whether it's incoming tide or outcoming tide, the boats will all end up in Motokaraka or on the Waima River. And they're not always coming back. So you have to be fast to look around the corner and make sure that nobody capsized. And you know the dinghies, the, the laser dinghy is self bailing but the other dinghies are not, so they become fast tubes. So to rescue a bar tube, it's people in your motor, in your uh, inflatable, and to pull a boat out, you need more than that horsepower. And I think that's probably the, the reason why those two horsepowers uh, outwards we have are slowly deteriorating and, and casting in. So that's why we thought this would be an ideal uh, moment to ask for. It's winter time to ask for a grant for our 50, 50 horsepower. A new motor, we never had a new motor. We always, uh, more majority of the motors got funded or given away from people and have done too many hours. I think it's time uh, to be safe here and we need at least one really good 15 horsepower outboard motor. The same thing is that we are as well supplying or doing the service for the Okinawa Outer Harbor for rescue on our boats. And two weeks ago, we had to rescue one person whose motor gave away and was floating around and and uh, asking us if we could uh, tow them out. Last year we had to tow out Pickney, the he's a uh, commercial fisherman, we had to tow him out. We had to tow out a an, an, uh, spa bar, believe it or not. So for, we're not only Sundays and Wednesday when we're sailing with the uh, kids and do our learning to sell program, we do as, as well, if they get, to know how to reach us and do some rescue work. And uh, that's all I have to say about uh, the outboard. Uh, right. If there are any questions about okay, the outboard, we'll start, please start, do. We'll start with Louis. Uh, Louis. I think it's pretty clear okay. what we are asking for. Yeah, so, so I see you guys in every Sunday as a whole group. There's probably more than people that in, than actually get into the boats because you probably haven't got enough boats. But the question I've got is, uh, you haven't included the volunteer hours on your application no. form. And I, uh, you, yeah, I got your email and, and the thing is that it was so clear for me because that's only what we do, volunteer work, you know. And, we, and uh, I talked to Kim about that and she said, I'll put it down and I did and I think you got all the copy of the, the volunteer hours we've done. No. No? Okay. okay right. Do you have one, Kim? Yeah. Uh, no, I'll up Kelly, you, you got a question? Yeah. And yeah. so we're making actually, and that's not even hours, 976 hours per season. Our season goes from the beginning of October till the end of April. Every Wednesday, every Sunday, we are there. And it's quite a commitment. Um, so, how many young people are on your Sailing training thing. How many other, other what do you mean by other people? How many kids? The various. The school kids is 18 kids. Yeah. And on Sundays, the, we have Sundays there are 20 kids. Sometimes we have to double them up in boats. And they come two, three weeks, and then the other, the other kids are coming in. So it varies. I think total during the season we have 50 kids, I think. Okay, cool. And the other one was? Do you think your volunteer dollars is about $3,560 a month? A month? Why would you think a month? Just say yes. I, <laughs> <laughs> well, you can, you can say if you have 976 hours times $20 is $19,000. Uh, divided by seven months would almost be $2,000 a month. Okay, yep, good. You get other groups coming as well from outside yes. the area. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> I'm happy to answer. <laughs>
what's the case? Um, you, want, you want to make a motion now then, Gary? Um, yes, you want to. Wait, okay, I'll, take, I'll, I'll take it if you want to. Now I'm really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 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 because the volunteer hours then comes through that, uh, I move it to 2,500. Oh, okay, yeah. So, yeah, I hang on, before you go, before you go there, uh, why the separation of um, monies there, Kim? Uh, through the chair, it was just so that it didn't go over on the community board oh, so funding. We, we, it's all one line item anyway, with community board funding and place making, but it just needed to be. Okay, so we've got we've got we're to go down. With, so if we're going to increase the amount of money, we take a lot of place making, is that right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so can you give me the numbers, please? So okay, so even if you were just to put that the community board funds it out of the community grants. Okay, you will you will yeah. Okay, so the, the motion is three thousand five hundred and sixty. Yeah. Um, plus yes, we'll do a second one. Yep. Yeah. Any discussion? <laughs> do we need to put something why we change it from the our recommendation of fifty percent? Oh, okay, it's good. Okay, do I have any comments? Sorry, Mr. G, this is another canvas only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, any, any comments, questions? All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Anybody against? Carried. Okay, you've got your you you call now. And uh, we have said shortly the event faster than uh, 20 footer, so if you want to come on a Sunday afternoon, come say with us, please do. At 1 o'clock, be there. Now we're having a great time. We have to do maintenance, but we started on the first of October. And that was that was the wise decision to keep that to last. Otherwise, you could have been seen to be bribing the community board. <laughs> 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 session was finished. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Thank you, Renee. Thanks, Renee. Right. We're done, are Right. Okay. So. Um, I'm going to, why don't we get, get rid of some of this um, administration and then Kelly will want to break for lunch. So um, do we have, we'll get straight on to the minutes. Um, are there any changes in the minutes, any corrections you have? Okay, um, all those in favour of those minutes are a true record of the last meeting. All those in favour, aye. Aye. Anyone against, Kerry? Um, We've got Jeanette in the room before the Um. Am I sure one of Okay, right, let's let's dispatch with the amenity lighting report and then we'll have lunch, eh? Okay, so do I have a motion yeah. for that, please? Okay, we're gonna we're gonna deal with we're gonna dispatch item six point one and then we'll have lunch. Six point one. <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, no. No, sorry. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Oh, okay. Do I have a motion? Yeah. Yeah. So Louis moves that Tokyo Hawking and Community Board accepts the reports outlining the young cash and energy lighting and beautification budgets for 2023. 2223 um, approves the allocation of mini light budget for 2023 2223 and approves the allocation of town beautification budget for one year 2023. Where's the report? This is the report. Can I say something? Do we need a second? Yeah, we need a second. Yeah, I'll take that. Okay, right. Oh, yeah. Okay, so Janina's here to ask questions if you want to put any questions to her. Okay, so we'll still start with you, Louis. What do you want to say? Well, I noticed a few items there that are being done in the Hokianga and stuff like that. 
top of the list is um, Freeze Park and Okanomi and Rowany and I don't know where Rowary Park is. Where's Rowary Park? That's in Kaiki. Kaiki. Out with, out with, um, okay. So, so you're looking at doing what out of there? So, so you're actually looking at the town beautification part of the. Um, oh, sorry, I Sorry, I was getting quite that. So the amenity line to reverse, we're doing... It's under town beautification. Yes, so town beautification, we're looking at... Um, that's just a list of reserves that we have in the area, which um, I thought could do with a, a table, a drinking fountain, some shade, etc. Um, but it's up to the community board um, how we allocate that money. Well, it's up to the board how we prioritise the list and if there's anything else that needs to be added to the list. Um, these are parts that I saw had nothing at the moment and they might have the odd timber table um, which probably needs replacing and I thought we could replace them with the nicer coloured concrete tables rather than just the plain concrete. Um, they look better and that, that was my thinking behind that. And there's, there's, there's no numbers on this. No, that's right. I mean, how much is the budget? Like, what, how much are we oh. working with? So the budget. Well, I think um, I'm I'd like to see numbers. Who else would like well, to see numbers? You make all of the numbers too. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna move a um, procedural motion. We lay this on the table, and and and, and just and just get numbers. You know, so so that we can see what see what's involved here, Jeanette. Um, so, does, any, does, does anyone wish? To, does anyone actually wish to dispatch this meeting? This is there a time limit on this meeting? No, you need to be no. Done the but through the chair, sorry, there's um, 100k in the town beautification budgets. Um, normally, those budgets don't get carried forward, but they have been for the last few years because of the um, because of COVID. And the amenity lighting has new amenity lighting has never actually been spent that that well. Um, so this is just a plan of going forward on how we deal with those. Okay, so we, we, can't, we can't talk just to have a plan with numbers that are just a plonk, plonk, plonk. Yeah, okay. Okay, um, yeah. so that's, I mean, you, 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 will, you will have heard us many times talk to to, to um, people who come to us and say it's plonk, plonk, plonk's no good. Um, we, you know, we, want a, we want a bit of a plan and uh, a reason for it. Yeah. So I, I guess if, if you wouldn't mind just to bring that back in a little more detail for next month. Yeah. Um, so everybody's happy with that? All those in favour of lay it on the table? Uh, the money is not going to go out of the budget. Like, like, like sort of, it's the so for, end of this month is the end of the... Yes, and for the year, for the town beautification budget for 21 22, that's already been allocated to Memorial Park, yeah. as I was in the report. The 100,000 for next financial year, um, I, what I thought I was doing was just putting a list of um, reserves up in front of you and for you guys to say what you thought your priority would be. I can say that you're probably looking at around um, six to seven thousand dollars for a table, a shade cell, and a drinking fountain. That's just off the top of my head from numbers that we've had previously. But I can come back and put numbers on those. Okay, yep, that'd be good. Um, now I'm just wondering, just hold on the agenda. And the same with the energy Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just hold the agenda. So, right, so what have we got after this? Um, funding application? No, no, at the end of the meeting. Ah, so we've got the workshop with the ETA. Okay. Jeanette, at the end of the meeting, can we have 20 minutes of your time? Absolutely. In a workshop? Yep. Okay, and we're just, we're just going to go through, we're just going to um, to chew the fat on this and, and, and describe the kind of stuff that we want um, in, a, in a written report. Absolutely. And for you to put, see you off in a direction. How's that? Yeah. Can, Great stuff. Can I also ask the same question about the amenity lighting fund? Yeah. Is that going to disappear at the end of this month? Um, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't do because I've put this report up to say that we want to allocate those funds. Yeah. Okay. Um, we just need to have a bit more um, detail of where they need to be allocated. Okay. Okay, so all those in favour of laying this on the table? Can I have a second? Yeah, I'll see you, man. Okay. Cool, done. So if you pop back at the end of the meeting uh, for 20 minutes, um, um, Marlene, Marlene will tell you when. No she'll, be, she'll, be, she'll, be, she'll know once we've dispatched some of this stuff what we're laying for. Cool. And we'll just have a bit of a chat and then we can get another, meeting, another report or expansion of this report next meeting. Yep, yeah, cool. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. How many items and reports have we received over the last three years? And nothing done. How many? What has actually been achieved? Oh, I've got this here tomorrow. Tell me. 
But Laurie, this report is ridiculous. And I don't think that we can actually make a great decision based on it. Thanks, Jane. Um, it's done. Right, OK, right, we're going to have lunch. We're going to have half an hour for lunch. Oh, sorry, 35 minutes of lunch. We'll make a nice round number to come back. Quarter past 12. OK.
Okay, right, back to the meeting. Um, next item is Money Application 6.2 on page 21. Um, I just need to declare interest in the final one. Okay, yeah. so why don't, okay, so are there any interest in any of them? Yeah. So who's got interest? Yeah, yeah there's, um, because Brian Barnard has been the banker. Okay, so do you guys want to, um, are you happy to move, second, discuss, and vote in, 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 in separately in all this rather than just in one? Yeah. Yep. Okay, let's do that, eh? Okay. Um, the first one, um, do I have a motion, a mover for the uh, Lansar? Yeah, I will. Okay, so Emma moves and John seconds that the Kaiko Hokianga Community Ward approves the sum of X, oh, sorry, blank to be paid from the board's placement account to fund off land search and rescue for leasing 218 water, uh, Wheeler Road, Territory. Okay, so Emma, would you like to talk about that? No, I'm just happy with the good work that they do. Okay. And I'm very sure. John, do you wish to speak? I support the does anyone wish to speak to it before we take the money? Well, I'd like to see you know, part of the problem is they pay this rent and that's wasted money going to fund all holdings, so we probably get some of it back anyway. But there should be a way of sort of looking at ways of reducing the rent that they pay. Is there a way of doing that through our motion? <laughs> Well, I've said that I'll write a letter yes. to um, Final Holdings. So you, okay. um, and I uh, we used to get a meeting, the chairs the chair used to get a meeting with the Capital Holdings um, a couple of times a year. And we used to talk about these things. So I'll, I'll chase that one up as well. So Marlene's got a, a, a okay. message to me. So, okay, okay. anyone else wish to discuss, discuss? Okay, so numbers from Kelly around. Five. 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 John. Five. Emma. Five. 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 Okay, the number's five. All those in favour? Five. five. Anyone against? Okay, carried. So the motion for five thousand dollars is passed. Um, B has been done. Okay, so C is Romarama Trust, which is um, and John John's bowing out for us. So the, uh, do I have a mover? Yeah. Okay. C and D together. Yep. Sure. Okay. So, uh, on blanks both. No, money. Okay, so the motion is the Coco Hill County Community Board approves the sum of five thousand dollars to pay for the broad's place making fund account to the Ramarama Charitable Trust for the administration of the Hire Purchase Home and Materials Plus Travel and Mileage for Wipeout Project. And also approves the sum of five thousand dollars to be paid from the 2022-23 Board's Community Fund uh, for the same thing. Um, so do I have a seconder? Yeah, second. Okay. Um, Kelly, do you wish to speak? I just want to thank like John and, and I mean, they shouldn't have to do it, but if you don't actually clean it up, it looks terrible. And I, uh, I'd just like to say thank you for what you're doing. Thank you. And the other thing is, I mean, you know, we, we can either do it ourselves like this, um, or we can pay megabucks for some contractor to do it who doesn't care. This is, uh, to me, this is a no brainer. Anybody else? All those in favour? All right. Anybody against? Carried. E. Um, do we have a motion for the Monarchy Tainana Trust? I believe that we give them the 100 percent that they are asking for, 165899. Double seconder? Yep. Okay, so you, you, do you want to talk to that? Justify? Well, the only reason that the that the funding got taken down was because they didn't get the uh, volunteer hours included. So uh, I think they provide a good service. Uh, I think they did good jobs. I think we should have given the money. Okay, here we are. I support what they do, but I'm still got that question: Why, why cannot? Yeah, you know, why can't they combine with the community hall? because there will be other people who would want to use it as well. And I think we need to look at that option. Mm, I, don't I mean, mean oh, you know, that means that other people are going to have use of it. It's going to be stored there anyway. I'm going to get a um, 
another one next year for us, say another TV to replace it. And I'm, I'm with you, I'm with you, Kevin. And one nice big one on the wall of the hall. Um, then I'll form, you know, support that 100%. They can charge us heaps for the use of it when we go there. Yep. Nobody else? Maybe the board will just put their own application in now anyway that they know that we're willing to, okay. to go there. Okay, well, let's put the motion in. Well, we could suggest to them that and talk to the board. Like, Judy is on the board committee, and so am I. Yeah. But, you know, why, don't, why don't you come back next month? After speaking at the whole committee, for you and Judy. I'll talk. be away anyway. I'm, I'm not going to be at the next meeting. Okay. But I, I think given the money and, and make a suggestion that they look at uh, making it available for wider use in, in the hall. Well, I mean, if we're going to give it to the Martin Tito the Trust, then they can use it for what they want. <coughs> yeah. so we, we did discuss, I mean, we've had a, a few discussions about capability, capacity, in, in our outlying area for. For media, you know, for people yeah. to go in and perhaps watch our meetings in an area or participate on without their own, without their own thing, right? And um, maybe that's what we do. Suggest but the hall next but time. But they will take a whole lot of other services as well. Yeah, yeah, it would. There's no, there's no doubt about it. It's, it's more than just this. Um, and if we do it, well, then these guys can take it down to the gym and deal with it. Rather than playing around. Okay. Now, all those in favour? Aye. Is there anybody against? Carried. Questions. We could go to Kelly. Kelly's not voting on this, but we'll take you should, should answer any questions in lieu of the public forum this morning. I'm No, no, you're just going to work for us to ask Kelly any questions first. Chairman, I'd just like to say I've got a bit of insider trading. That sum would be about a quarter of the value that's been put into that pension. It's over 100 years old. There's been three engineers at it and with expertise and machines that are. Some came from Wangarei Timber Company, and they've done a wonderful job. And as I say, I think that would be about a quarter of the price if you put it out to, to you know, commercial enterprise. Um, I, think, I think that's good value for money. Okay, Kelly, it looks like there's not any questions. Do you want to make any statements? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't got it yet. I can okay, right. Right. Yes, I have. I don't want to okay. see it be. Okay, so, so look. You can be Santa Claus on it. It'll be going by Christmas. There's, there's three of us on the trust board, and, and I, I might like to point out that all of us are on the trust board because we're here and we've got a good idea, not because that's our life. Um, so we, we reluctantly step back and say we've got a conflict of interest, or I do, I do at least. Well, I don't really believe there is a conflict of interest because let's face it, we all have conflicts of interest for every other community that we represent. And if we decide to go off them, there'll be no one left. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I would have to declare a conflict of interest in case I'm Santa Claus next year. <laughs> I'm actually quite happy for the three of you to be here. To me, that building is definitely, you know, it's historical. Well, okay, so let, let's see where this goes, right? So, what, what, uh, Laurie, what am I? The full amount? Yes. Yeah. No, no. Yeah, full amount. Valuable money tip. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we've got we've got we've got four people who said the full amount anyway. So the three of us will sustain. Um, all those in favour? We don't have a mover in oh, the second. You got a mover? I'll move it. Emma moves that the, the, the sum of ten thousand four hundred thirty be paid from the board's post bank fund account, Pioneer Village Kaiko, for the repair costs of the nineteen hundred and two thorough steam traction engine to support the following community outcomes: proud vibrant communities, communities that are health, safety, connected, sustainable, dollar seconder. Yep. Okay, all those in favour? Aye. And make the point that the um, that Kelly, John, and Mike have stayed. Yeah, they've stayed. And you've made a point that I've stayed on that last one. Thank you. Uh, the, does that mean we can drive to drive the traction engine? <laughs> we can bring it to the next <laughs> <laughs> We actually have put someone through these steam tickets. Yeah. Um, and they have been very costly exercise because the man actually has come from down the line. 
it's actually, I think it's, it's the same as a steam train, isn't it? It's quite a, it's a tricky one. You've got, you got to be a, um, a boiler, a boiler operator. Boiler operator, yeah. That's <laughs> well, maybe the guy that drives Thomas the Tank Engine can drive, drive the, the little train that goes around. So, so have we actually put the, the guy through the course? Yeah. When did that happen? Um, just, he just finished it before the first lockdown. Oh, okay, so it's a fair way of it. But yeah, so, so that, can... that was a lengthy project to, a process to even get him to that point where he could sit it. Okay. How old so was he? Phil is 60. 60. 60. Okay. So we, we so picked we, a few good years. And, and, and we really, if we could find some 60. even younger people that were willing to go there, but you know they they leave. So how, I mean, how much work is involved in getting the destination? What does it cost to pass? So you, you got the idea how to, to take the exam? Yes, you can come from... Um, Palmerston North. Okay. So it's about two and a half thousand dollars to put onto his ticket. Okay, that's but he's got to, yeah, and he's got to do, you know, certain hours, just like any other thing. And that would be through. I mean, we anybody who wishes to do it could do with their hours with him now. Yeah, I prefer to do it with Trevor. Trevor. Yeah. Yeah. So if anyone wishes, wish, uh, um, knows of any, I guess, younger people, maybe. People who moved back to Kaito with a family who want to take up a hobby of driving a steam tractor engine. Um, just call Kelly at the village and just see where you go. Actually, it might be an idea if John or somebody to put it on on the internet. It just may be somebody within our area. Yeah. That we would love to do it, love the opportunity. And other things, I mean, the traction engine gets shipped down to MOTAC every year. They take part of the steam display. Yeah. It's a nice looking engine. Sure. Okay, cool. moving on. <laughs> okay, the next one is Chime G. Do I have a mover for the. Boat ship, not the boat ship, the main ship. Alright, how about we go with a blank to start with? So I'll go move it for a blank. I'll move it. Okay, moves the sum of blank you pay from the board's place banking fund account to Rowley Resident our Area Residents Association for Venue High and Corporation Costs, including corporation fee, travel mileage, accommodation, support the quality outcomes, proud vibrant communities, communities that are healthy, safe, connected and sustainable. So I'll second up. Sure. Yeah, it's Kelly settings. Okay, right. Um, discussion, please. Uh, it's something that Rowley needs, and I think it was a good asset for any community to have a main shed. So I think I would give them the amount that they want to try and get this off the ground. Kelly. Um, I too am happy with the fact that. I mean, she could possibly be in Rowley, but I am not really interested in paying for them to go to the Wairarapa to have a look at a men's shed. I think if they did that, you know, the cost falls on the individual, like you said it would, um, they could come back and they could come back to this board with an, a better and even bigger application and I think we'd be more than happy then to help them get the menu done. But at this stage, I'm, I don't really want to pay for them to go there. So Look, I, I think we would. I think the policy says you can't, you know, travel costs to conferences and stuff like that isn't included. And this is not even a conference. So my, my gut feeling, I would come with you. I'd, I'd just for some reason to, to get an idea. I think might open the floodgates for some things that we're not scared for. So probably some places we're not prepared to go to. Um, but I do make the point, or I made the point, that you know, men's shares are, are a vital, or I would even say they're a vital um, asset for a community. So, you know, I mean, if they come back with um, for help later, um, I'll have an open bottle as far as I'm concerned, but not for 
this. So I'm wondering, I'm, I'm quite happy to do um, the professional fees, and in fact, I'm quite happy to up the professional fees for that, that guy. Is, this is what this guy does, he's a professional. Um, so that's my thoughts. My comments are, uh, I agree that, that we can't really charge a few thousand dollars for travel, but given what they're trying to do is applicable here as well, uh, and that information would be how they share would be, would be great. I would, they're talking about building and building, I would hope that even though they said that it would be ideal straight across the road to use the campus building at the bottom. I do wonder whether there's some other um, discussion, some further discussion needed to look at what can be done there because there's a huge amount of space there and there may in fact be, be solutions. Um, and I'd like to see those investigated. Certainly, if they can come back and there's a the way of fixing that, but then just have some work, some cost associated with the campus to get it fixed. They could come back and say, look, we'll fix that, create out the space there. Uh, there will be very likely woodworking tools and so on in there. Surely there's means, given this, given the size of railway and the need to actually involve as many groups as possible, surely there is something there that can be worked out. So really, you know, this is not going to put anything on, on the ground. I'm just going to provide the information which then they're going to probably come back and say, well, what would we like now to build it? This is where it is. So I don't know, um, yes, yeah, so I'm just looking at, I just don't know what figure, rather than saying 2,202, given what I've just described, there's going to be more work involved, and maybe uh, more costs, so I don't mind upping, I don't mind upping some of those figures there a little bit more, but not the travel. Mike? I fully support what John has just said. Um, in fact, you know, it could be useful for the Polytech. I mean, it could actually be part of one of the courses being used at the Polytech so many years down the track, so. But not true. They haven't actually even been to They didn't actually answer the question properly. About the travel. Yeah. So, and I think, you know, going to Kitty Kitty is probably a much better idea. I think they've been. They have been. Have they? Yeah. They were, they were going on the advice of the chairman of whatever the national organisation places that. Would be of similar state by going to wherever we got by rapper and uh, or two or whatever. Well, we're going to make a decision. If you want to, want to put some numbers to it, we're going to start again, Kelly? Yep, $1,002. Laurie. Yes, John. Rent, rent, legal fees, legal and fees. Like incorporation fees. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Emma, that's going to mean. Okay. And what, is, what number for you? Me? Yeah. yeah. I'll give them. No, I, I'd give them the full amount that they asked for, 5,200. Okay, well, then one, two, three, four, five, that's 1,002, and you're at 5,202. The number, the number to go through the motion is, is $1,002. So the, probably, the motion is to approve the sum of $1,002 to be paid for the board's place bank account for the Railway Residents Association for being hire and incorporation costs and legal fees um, to support the following community outcomes. Proud Railway Communities, communities are safe, healthy, connected and sustainable driver. Sorry. All those in favour? Bye. Bye. Yes, carry. Okay. Um, look, Kevin, when you go back home, can you just relay them our conversation? I mean, we we, we desperately want to um, support them, but but we just couldn't in the, in that way. Thank okay. you. Okay. Um, and finally, there's oh. 
How much did we give him? One thousand. And two dollars. Sure, there's not another ten cents to it. No. Okay, so. <laughs> I don't know if everybody understands what's happening here. Kim, do you want to explain um, H, I, and J, please? Uh, certainly. So through the chair, it's just to really clean up decisions that you have made previously. Um, and that's for the auditing purposes. So for H, it looks like you only funded Rob Pink currently from the 2022-23 budget. But the intention at the meeting was to fund him from the 2021-22 budget as well as the 2022-23 budget. So that's just to clean that up, revoke the decision that you've made and then separate it out clearly to show that one is from the 2021-22 budget and one's from the 2022-23 budget. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll put it all together. Um, so I move that the board revokes the following decision made at the Kaito Hope Game and Community Board on the 4th of February. The motion is there. Um, then subsequently approved $1,650 to be paid from the board's community fund to Rob Pink for the purchase of sand, um, and then also approves the, sum, the same sum for to be paid by from the next year's financial accounts community fund account to Rob Pink for the purchase and transportation of sand to clean the next one. Do I have a, a second? Yep. Okay, so as Kevin just said, we'll just clean up um, the stuff that we intended to do. Uh, anybody else wish to speak? Yeah, I... Like this will come up in the new board's era. That motion will stand. Yeah, yeah well, it's it, it's basically it, 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 yes, well, I mean, well, I guess so as, long as, the, yeah, as long as the as long as the before our before the before November, um, so the next board can't revoke it. Well, usually they do it in summer, but they do this. Yeah, I guess. So through the chair, it will be similar to the application that you considered earlier for the tag out trust too, with that. Yeah. This year's and next year's budget. So. Okay. And I mean, given that the next board probably won't have a proper meeting in March. Yep, yep. I'm happy for it yep. to go okay. through. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Anybody Aye. need? Carry. Um, and the final one, K, I move that the board approves the sum of $10,000 to be tagged for the 2021, 2022, 23 rural travel. Uh, fund from the board's place making fund account due to the limited amount allocated to the community board compared to the amount requested um, from the applicants and the outcomes of the opportunities for children and the youth that's fund for yeah. us. Okay, um, same again from last year, right? I mean, we just put on a budget aside for a uh, higher rural travel fund. I think um, Cheryl was most pleased about it. So I do want to mention something that um, yeah. Laurie had mentioned before. That uh, given the travel, given the, given the demand of the Franco Hotel, maybe more should be actually allocated. Well, okay, well, we, 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 I'm not, I'm seeing ten thousand dollars, um, but anyway, I'm quite happy. Yeah, I mean, we, we, oh, okay. we don't need to spend that whole amount of money if there's no request for it, do we? This is just which is just sits there ready for the next time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, all those in favour? Aye. Anyone against? Carried. Okay, so we have how much money left, Kim? Uh, $39,607.85. $39,607.85. How did that go down to 50? They hadn't included the $10,000 for the rural travel fund. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. cool. Okay, so. Um, we have $39,000 that's got to be allocated before the end of the month. Um, and in discussions we've had, um, three, three projects have come up um, that are on our strategic plan, and so we have an opportunity just to, complete, to, to, to tag this money for those options. Um, there was one was a Rawani concept designs. Okay, so we'll get you to tell us about that in a minute. Uh, we've got Okayo Hall, that's about um, uh, toilets and kitchen design. Um, and then we've got the Kaigo Inafa shared path design. Um, so we have an opportunity now, if you want to, to allocate those either actual numbers or 
as, I guess, as a whole to those projects. What was what the first one you said? Right Rowandy concept design. Oh, so right, right, right. That was the one that's... Those are the ones that we all spoke to you about the other day. Yeah, yeah, okay. So what page are we on? Uh, we're, no, we're not on a page. We, we, we're now we're now got a situation where maybe we should leave that till maybe that's better left till seven point one actually. Okay. Was she all going to come and talk to us about it? Was, but she's she's um. Not well, I should because she had a family emergency. Okay. Okay. So. You want, do we want to have a bit of a round of discussion about this without a motion? You know, we have $39,678 in excess to allocate to our strategic our priorities. So there was rowing concept. But haven't we got three months in which to do it? No. Oh, no, they're going to be allocated today. Could we just not split that money three ways? And I think so. Project the same amount of money? What were the other two? Sorry. I, I don't. I don't know that. I don't know that a pilot hall means that much. It wouldn't mean that much. It's just, it's just design of um, toilets mm -hmm. and um, and mm -hmm. kitchens. Then they might have enough to actually start the work. Well, that's when we go to long-term plans. No, that's what the long-term plans are about. When you say split it into three ways, what do you actually mean? Divide by three. Divide by three hundred and three dollars to each. I, I thought. I mean, I was talking to Cheryl about it. She sort of said there was going to be some money from North Hokinga too. Okay, well, we, if you recall, we've got a um, we've got a whole bunch of money coming next month again, place makings that we do with that yeah. you know, we we can allocate. So this is more about this is more about yeah. have, having it transfer across, and it is about allocating our you know what what gets and what doesn't get. So it's the Rowany concept, a Kaio Hall, and what else? And the Kaikoe Nata Shared Path Design. Which, which has got quite a bit of work in it, so I expect that design to, you know, cost a bit. Yeah. I can give you some money that you can spend in North Hokiema now. <laughs> What's that? Giving us money? You, you mean giving us money? No, no, no. Well, we gave Mona Walker $20,000 for a design, so should we just match that and give that to Browning as well? Well, yeah, just a, a design cost. What, what is, so what is the work to be done in Maui? Well, there's a lot of work and a lot of it goes back to the uh, report that was done by ISMAS, which came up with all sorts of designs for things to happen in Maui. And things that were on that list were sort of work around the domain area, which uh, has got a whole lot of projects going on. Some of them are looking for outside funding, which includes the... Uh, the gym, Sound Trust, and things like that. There's also the town centre improvements, the footpaths were on that list, the Rowany Foreshore, uh, where the council dumped these big concrete ugly blocks in the foreshore, replacing them. But remember, this is for design and not for doing. Yeah, yeah, but it could all be part of what is. Is that a whole town design? No, that's a project. Well, things that are that well, like a lot of that work has been done already. I don't. I, you know, it's, oh, uh, my, 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 look, I mean, I, oh, sorry. This. Oh, sorry, Tanya. Away you go. It's okay. Thank you. Yeah. Through the chair. Um, I just wonder if there is any merit in allocating it to one project. I think that there's a bit of a risk that if you allocate it to three projects, none of them get done. But if you allocated it to one project um, and gave... So if you had a resolution now that said it was going to go to, I would suggest, the most advanced and deliverable project, and then you didn't need all of it, you could then use it next financial year reallocated to something else, but at the moment, if you split it three ways, you've kind of have a bit of a risk that none of them get achieved, in, in my opinion. But so, just a suggestion. Well, I mean, and, and, and just to add to that, I mean, there's, there's, there's not really a risk because we can always add to the ones we didn't allocate to with more money next year. So, I mean, I'd like to suggest we allocate the whole damn thing to the, to the footpath, and then when when we know a bit more about the concept design for Rowan and when Cheryl comes back to us, we just allocate some there out of next year's budget. And same with the Okaino. I mean, we, 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 all, we all know those are strategic projects. Which footpath? 
That's the Kaikoui Napa shared path from here to Napa. We need to, we, we need to design that. So. Rowling misses out again. Not at all, not at all. As, as, I, as I keep pointing out, Louis, okay, we have a couple of hundred thousand dollars coming to us next month. Okay, and, 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 and right now you don't know what that's for. I'm just saying most of that, the most of that project and the one that we have in our mind that we know what it's for is this path we've been talking about for years. Aren't we discussing that after this meeting with... Uh, no, no, that's different. I mean, it's in Yeah, I yeah, actually agree with you on that one. Because that, you already talked to Russell, you've yeah. got the uh, group. I mean, I mean, like, look, I, I think all three projects are, are worthy of funding, and I, I, I just, you know, we, we, when we get sure next next, next next month on some numbers for rowing, and let's let's fund it that way. Um, I mean, I'm gonna move right now that we we allocated um, the entire amount to the to design for the Kaiko Nana footpath. Another second. Rowing footpath is very urgent too. Yeah, but, that, but, yeah, but those have all been designed. Okay, you're, 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 yeah, that's fair enough. Okay, you're right. So that's my motion. That's the motion on the table. I, I mean, I don't have to, I don't have to defend the motion. So, um, Louis, you were told? Do you have a second defend the motion? Yeah, did, um, John. Thank you. Uh, um, John, I don't know what I want to say. Like, uh, I, I, I'm going to put it right there, like, Louis. Rather, like rather, rather than give alternatives, I want you to speak against the motion if you don't want it. Because the motion on the table is, is to allocate that entire amount to the to the, to the part in Kaikoui. No. You're talking about design. So Desi like, design work. Yeah, that's all it is. Design. No, there's yeah. no footpath. So feasibility yeah. study. Yeah, but like all that money on one well, footpath. Give, give Louis some time. Oh, yeah. You want me to speak in favour yeah. of it? Yeah. Yeah. So to speak in favour of it, if you look at um, the, this summer, now I know this is no, this is no solution, but this summer, um, it's lovely to go to the here. Uh, you're all aware that the visitor numbers have gone to the floor. And um, so the Cycleway Trust has been striving to get that up and running into and so on. Uh, and part of that focus that they've been doing is putting various byways and businesses off it. This is one of them. But not only that, you've got innovation in the place park, and in terms of um, multi mode transport options, uh, that's if you need that. Plus, if you look at what it's connecting, it's connecting from Kaito, it's connecting. Innovation Enterprise Park, which you which you know about, there's, there's business going that way. There's a number of houses that's got no footpath. It's the state line, which is quite busy. Uh, it's also connecting the cemetery, the gold walking area, the speedway, the uh, showgrounds where um, you have uh, intervenes uh, coming into the facility that are being generate money. You've got the industrial park, which I mentioned. You've got the golf course, um, squash course, and then on to Napa with the new um, um, springs being put in place. So, and also the whole community out of Napa. So, you, so, there's a lot of things being connected there. This is only the design uh, to say, well, where is it going to go, which we've been working with Russell Shaw on. Uh, and various other options going up the route. By doing that design, it means it's placed in a position that part of that work, uh, all of it can be picked up should additional funding come through. So I mean, give, give the region a good bang for the buck in many ways uh, and provide the connection. But that's that's why I think it should the design work should be done. How much does the, do you think that design work is going to cost? I, I don't know. I think uh, it, it, I think if, if it doesn't use it all, I, I'd expect it to be allocated uh, onto other. So seeing it state highway, is it really our responsibility to do that design work? It should be highly subsidised. It used to be 90% of the construction on state highways. It's for construction. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's for the construction. One of the problems we've had is when we've, when we've moved into some of these things, we didn't have the, the project formed well enough. And as a result, we've yeah. actually struggled with 
actually getting off the ground. And, and uh, yeah, we'll talk about some of the other pressures we're struggling with. Which is what happened in Rowanee's case, trying to get the footpath from the ferry to the hospital. And we weren't able to get on the shovel ready projects, and that's why it was never done. You know, like, so that's the problem at Rowanee Way, Hokianga Way, is there's nobody really championing the needs of those communities out there. It's you, it's you, you are. Yeah, I know. And, and I am, but, you know, where the, the, the power lies where the majority... Oh, Louie. I'm going to cry. No, I'm not going to cry. Yeah, Louie. I mean, yeah, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you look at the funding, the funding allocation of, of our funding towards the, across the, across the district, I think, um, the, 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 the whole thing that's pretty bloody good. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to take muscles in. Just in response to you, well, Louie, I know it's not the specific, Mr. Chief, but there is actually a training project starting and we're looking at, again, uh, all of those aspects that have a separate fund. Uh, so you were, you were away, you couldn't come to that meeting, uh, but that's a look at uh, from the ferry through to the um, gym and also the training centre where that, that, that shared foot uh, cycle lane becomes part of the training. Okay, can I, can I ask yeah. a question? Okay. Who is going to do the design? Right at the moment. I mean, we don't have an idea what the cost is, but who's going to do the design? Okay, so both so far we've got um, final holdings looking at it and we've got the council looking at it. So um, at the moment, the final holdings are probably going to be enough to get a crowd to do it. They're looking, they've, done, they've done some work in free time, and so we've just got to be able to make sure they can finish it. But it'll be done, but it'll be managed by the staff, the council staff. Sorry, I'm worried about trying to hold and they wouldn't give any money for the rent. Well, the it's, you know, design is one thing. It's actually seeing the work is another. And I, it's just that we all have our community of interests. We all have our, you know, our own interests, and we'll all back for I don't know whatever community or whatever we are you know sort of interested in nothing gets done why can't we just come so. together and well only had a little bit of footpath in front of my shop back in 2013. that's the only footpath work that's been done in Rauri, except recently they repaired some desperate okay right yep. yeah, okay, anybody, else, anybody else wishes to speak i'm going to put this to the vote if nobody else wishes to actually actually speak i mean you 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 to say stay ellen you haven't spoken uh, Right, Kelly. Oh, you know I want this for pass. Okay, right. All those in favour of the motion, we're going to put it. Okay. Aye. Yeah, I'll vote for it. Okay, so again. Otherwise, it's going to be. Okay, so it's passed. Okay, so. Um, Please record my vote. Yeah. You want your vote recorded, Alan? Yeah. Alan wants okay. his vote recorded as well. Pause it. But it's, which, which way did you vote? Oh. He put his hand up. For. For or against. Okay, it's cool. Yes. For against. 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 Yeah. I mean, so, I, I, so for, for, for the hooky interview, I mean, like I said, what I'm saying, we, we have next month, we have a, 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 another set of money. Um, make sure we get in there and, I mean, the, the, team, the, the board wants to fund these things. Board wants? The board wants to fund these things. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, don't, don't, even, don't, don't even shy away from bringing a project with a little more, a little more than just a wish to the table. Um, because we will probably we will fund As the design, I, I thought the design work was done for the to the hospital. Is that not happening? Well, we haven't been told about it. So not that I have heard. Sure. I noticed on some information that I got was that uh, Andy uh, Finch said that the community board has been informed about. About that, but, uh, well, let, let, okay, so, so let, let's get a little bit more baked than half baked about yeah, this thing. Yeah. Okay, so let's get some information and see if, if it needs to be funded for design, well, then we can do that. But at the moment, we don't know that it wasn't, and it wasn't on the list. Okay, cool. I would give you a reason why I support Kaikoi. If Kaikoi is not right, the rest of the communities within this area, Kaikoi Hokianga, is not going to be right as well. It is our main town. Let's just get that done first, and then we can go out to all the other areas. I'm not saying that the other areas are going to miss out. 
There's only one area that misses out at the moment, that's North and that's North Hokianga. Gotcha. Oh, come on, we did it all on our own. Full stop. Oh. Anyway, you and I are in your go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 15 yeah. years we've waited right. for Manga Moka. Let's just vote for one and let's do it. I agree with you, Manga Moka. I got all of this. They seem to be left out, left out, left out, left out. 15 so years we've waited. Wait but we've given them 20,000 to get that design. To get the start, yeah. So that's, yeah. that's a big plus. But also, back in my mind, I'm thinking about Pungaroo, where the <laughs> people in Pungaroo said, hey, what can we do to do our own footpaths? And I don't think there's been any response that's come back. Now that we've got these social procurement or sustainable procurement, let's have another look out there. So we'll go out there with you yeah. and have a look at that. And see what we can actually do out here along the lines we're going. As a board, we've actually been achieving quite a bit. Yeah, well, and, and the other thing, John, is, is and even if it's design work for that kind of thing, oh, whether, whether, yeah, whether yeah. the projects are fully baked, so we've just got to get long-term funding. Out. Well, that's right. Like if you're looking at, if you're looking at again another training opportunity, if you're looking at say, Pungaroo, just just use that as an example, and they want to put a footpath, and the first question that we said, well, what what is it going to look like? And they would wouldn't have that. They've got the manpower, they've got the skills and everything, but they wouldn't know what to do. So if we actually do that design for them, and then we can actually manage that, perhaps some of that too, then cool. we'll look okay. at the model yeah. that really works and then make a difference. Okay, so we've got we've got a few months now before the end of the term. Let's get those things yeah. on, on, on and dispatch. And Mr Chief, don't forget that, that um, three metre wide uh, from uh, Kovacoa to the ferry. Right as well. Understand the trick we know by the way. Okay, um, now, Louis, I overheard you a moment ago talking about Bahuda Kaua trees. Was it something in the meeting? Oh, in the we've been trying to protect these trees at Amapuri from damage by cars driving up there, and, and the community agreed to put barriers up there to stop okay. that happening. Is it, is it something you wish to discuss today? Yep, might as well, because. Uh, Hang on, just hold on. Um, okay, it's not it's not on the agenda, um, so we can discuss it. Um, Do we have a workshop after this, Mr. Chair? Okay, well, no, I'm just wondering whether or not it's something that needs to be dealt with, that needs to be um, like action being taken. Um, and I think the, the because it's important, there is a there is ability in the local government act, so local government official information act, meeting the official information act, um, to have it discussed. Um, is is there a reason? Okay, we, we understand why you couldn't talk about it before because and it's like it was happening. That's part of the problem. We don't yeah, and and so is there a reason they can't wait for next week? Um, is, is damage being done? Or will it be done? Well, damage has been done. Okay. It's been done. I don't know. I don't know if we can reverse it. I don't think we can. Uh, you know, it's like that with everything. You know, like, like sort of. Okay, just to give you a couple of examples, the toilets at Open and in Amapri, they were painted because. Okay, painted. I'm going to stop you right there. Yeah. Okay, okay. This is. I mean, we we don't. This is not general business. Okay. I'm going to ask you a specific question about the hood cow trees. Okay. Well, what is, the is, is there? Is, is, can it wait till next meeting? And, and if it can't, why not? Because if it can't, we'll discuss it today. No, I don't think it can wait till next meeting. Okay, why can't it wait till next meeting? Because by then the damage will be total. Okay, so I move that we discuss the Bahutakawa trees and deal with it if we have to um, at this meeting. Um, and the reason. We, it wasn't on the agenda was because we didn't know about it. And the reason we can't wait is because there's ongoing damage. Um, do I have a seconder? Yep. Okay. All those in favour of discussing and dealing with this matter? Right. Right. Okay, right. So, what I'm going to do is we'll... Are there any other agenda items that I can add into one resolution? Or would you like a resolution? Did I hear you talking about a a um a almost fatal accident in your area, Kelly? Earlier. Yeah, in the and lack of follow-up. That one. Okay, so is that something you wish to um, make sure? Yes. Okay, and the reason it wasn't on the agenda? Because it's not 
because they've only just finished tapping. Okay, and the reason they can't wait till next time? Because someone's going to die before next time. <laughs> Through the chair, was that specific to amenity lighting? That's amenity. Don't worry about it. I'll complain about it next month. Okay, right, okay. Right, just one thing. Mike, can I just ask a question? Who are making these decisions? About? Well, for instance, the focus of the We're going to what find out. That's why, that's why we have a decision, so we can ask that question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so, um, Louis, before we make a resolution, uh, I'm going to just um, ask you to describe the issue. Okay, and then we're, then we're going to have a, 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 a either ask questions or make a motion. So can you describe what your problem is? Right. Well, the problem is we've got some very valuable protected trees at Okanani, Okanani Barutakara trees. What has happened there is that the old footpath has been ripped up and the foundation has been done for a much wider new footpath. So, uh, and they would have most likely damaged the roots of the tree. I didn't see the thing happening. I only found about it later on when the, the hole's been dug out and the, the work has been done to put the new concrete footpath in there. So, as you know, we're, people are very concerned about those Pahutakawa trees. That's why the community board previously uh, got stones put in there to stop people driving on that area to protect the roots. Previously, we've asked for community amenity funding there, and we were told we couldn't have that because it would mean lead to trenches being dug to put the cable in, to and that would damage the roots. So I'm just wondering. Okay. Who makes these decisions? Okay, so so if, if I, and this is not a motion yet, but if I say something <coughs> like um, that the board asks the CE um, to report on the widening of the footpath beside the Budokawa trees uh, and specifically address um, the policy of um, protecting trees, okay, and the, and the decision that was made what level was the decision made and when what delegations did that person have to to either violate or ignore or if there were, if there was a policy and also in the report um, contrast it specifically with the refusal to put amenity lighting um, at, at the same place a few months ago because of the damage to the tree. A few years ago. So I mean, if, we, if we made a motion along those lines would, would that um, give you the information that you wanted? Yep. Yep. Whether it would rectify the problem, I don't oh, know. Probably not. I mean, but, I mean, but the point is, right, I mean, you've, you've got a policy, you've got decisions being made all over the place, probably by people who can't make those decisions, or shouldn't be making those decisions to violate policy. Um, so let's let's open it up. Let, oh, sorry, let's see if it will be allowed, see if, see if the CEO will allow it to be opened up. So uh, I think the issue is that sort of people that, even the community board members, aren't notified of major work's going to go on, you know, like like the issue of the toilets at Open Only in Amapri, the concrete blocks on the foreshore of Rowney. Yeah, okay. These are issues that should have been... Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, I know. Okay, so we'll see. Yeah. Yep. Okay, we'll see. But, but, but back to trees. I mean, I yeah. think I think trees are used as excuses to, to support whatever wants to be supported. I mean, we've got a bunch of old trees down here that should be chopped out in Kaito. Um, and we were, there was, there wasn't allowed to be a footpath put along there because it might damage these trees. I mean, what are they? The old pine trees are going to fall down and I've bloody ugly things. Um, so, you know, there, there we go. On, on, one hand, on one hand, very valuable trees are ploughed through. On the other hand, you don't get a footpath because they're inside of pine trees. So, who knows? These trees are historic. Alan knows more about this. They're nearly, nearly 200 years old, probably two years from now, they'll be 200 years old. Implanted they were by, planted by Governor John Webster, one of the first settlers in um, Hokianga. And I bet he'd be turning his grave to see what's happening up there. Yeah. There's nowhere to bury him now. Yeah, the, um, we, we, we understand that the path's stump and the, the damage that's been done can't be reversed. And we don't wish to prevent the footpath from continuing on and being done. But we wish that the council would be more transparent 
with the processes and let the community board know beforehand so that we could warn them of the danger to those trees. Okay. Can I just ask yeah. a question? Who has said that the damage has been done and it can't be reversed? I think if we go back to the CEO, then we might get an answer. I mean, that, that surprises me because I keep speaking to Nina, who's been involved with it. And she said she knows very little about it. Well, that's because the, the, the footpath guys will be doing it. I mean, you know, not, not everybody in the council knows whatever everybody's doing. So, so it, won't, it won't be a high level decision, it'll be a low level decision or something. Yeah. So let, let's open it up and say, was that low level person allowed to make that decision? Yeah. So Okay, right, we're just... I'm just thinking what recommendation has we formed that recommendation at all? Well, I mean, surely just, a, surely just a question, right? Is there a policy about protecting trees? Okay, when, when you're putting infrastructure around them? Was the policy followed? Um, you know, was, it, was, any, was, it, was any research being was done? And was the person who decided to do it, damage those trees, allowed to? Was, was he delegated that authority? Did he have delegated authority to do that, to override the policy? I mean, that's the question, right? Yeah. And, and I'd, I'd actually like, just just before that, I'd like to know whether these trees are actually recognised as being historic and, and significant trees. Yeah, they're notable trees. They're yeah, in the trees. district plan. Is that, you know, if they wanted to frighten to damage some old pine tree for the sake of a footpath, in this case, they are high, high profile and they've been um, widely talked about over the last two to three years. So uh, they're quite fresh in the minds of council. Okay. Well, when, when my name is back, we'll... Apologies. That's okay. In, in that same area, the resource consent out now to ex extend the open only store <clears throat> to widen it another four meters i've got no problems with it but you know it doesn't go to the trees it goes along this way so there's not an issue there, no okay so i'm sure just a point of information and so to, to, to deal with this i move um that the community board asked the following questions that's right. I, I, I ask for a report from the CEO addressing the following questions. I'll fit in that. Yep. And on. So. so the first one requests the CEO provide a report on the widening of the. No, no, no. No. no? Uh, request the, uh, the CEO to provide a report of the community board addressing the following questions. And we'll go with those. Mm -hmm. uh, what policies are in place for the protection of trees um, from infrastructure construction? Destruction. Were those policies followed with regard to the footpath under the Pudakawa trees in Lebanon? On near the open only shops, I guess. We do, we do. Mm -hmm. What delegated authority did the decision maker have to override the policy? Mm -hmm. And please include as background the contrast between this project and the amenity lighting project several years ago, which was refused on... Quite casual, then, that's the chair. And co contrast this with the refusal to put amenity lighting near the Putakawa trees due to potential damage to the trees. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favour? Oh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So that was moved by yourself and Yep. And you are seconded by Okay, anyway, sorry. Thank you. Okay.
Project, uh, 6.3, project funding reports. Page 74, drive and mover. Okay, Louis moves that the Taipei Hong Kong Community Board note the project report received from the Naki Tinana Trust. B note the project report received from Te Pu or Te Peki Community Art Gallery. And C approve the Hong Kong Community Educational Trust to spend the remaining $1,249 allocated in December 21 meeting to be spent on the purchase of a Makita monkey functional split shaft power head and Makita pole saw attachment um, to meet the following community outcomes. The crowd of communities, communities that are health, safety, connected to the state. Should that others. last one be separated off that or just happy to be there? Well, I mean, okay, firstly, I'll take a second one. Yep. Okay. And secondly, if you wish to be separated for voting, we can do that. Well, the third one theoretically is a project report, is it? Kind of. Okay, so that's second. Okay, um, so I think it's pretty simple. I have no further um, comments. Louis, do you have comments? Do you, do you wish to be separated for voting? No, I'm happy okay. Anybody else? Is. All those in favour? Anybody against? Carried. Okay, item number 7.1, Statement of Community Fund Account. Um, it's a month old now, and I presume it means we're down to zero. Um, I'll move that the Kaito Hokkien Community Board receives the report Kaito Hokkien Statement Community Board Fund Account as of the 30th April 2022. Do I have a second that? Any, any comments? All that? Sorry? No, no, no. Anybody comments? All those in favour? No. Oh, thanks, Gary. And finally, action sheet. I move that we receive the action sheet. Do I have a second that? Yeah. Okay, right. Does anyone have any questions? Or not, not that we can answer them. Do we have any comments um, that need to be passed on about this? I, you know, I'm just wondering what happened to the item that was on the sheet before, which related to the $80,000 they paid, but that seems to have been dropped off the action sheet, and we haven't got a result from that yet. Not that I'm a conspiracy theorist or anything, Louis. But I think it's a conspiracy. You think it's a conspiracy? Well, where's it gone? It hasn't. We gave permission for it to be wiped off. Has the money been found and reallocated to our footpath projects? Or mainly the Manning Street footpath because that's where it was allocated to? I know. Through the chair? Yeah. You have a workshop with the ETA. I'm sure they'll have a, well, have a response. Yeah. Well, I'd like Today? to make some sort of note here about it. You know, it's missing. It's gone missing. I guess it was on next last month, wasn't it? Uh, I've got last month's. Last month it, it was on there yeah, yeah. as part of the last motion here. It had B request that the remaining footpath budget from 2020 estimated to be 80,000 be found and returned for capture to the Clark Area Okean Community Footpaths. Okay, so can we leave that with you to? Yeah, so uh, you don't want to also question. Yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll question um, the ETA yeah. now, but if, if you could just put it back on the action. So, you yeah, know, I just, where is it? It's the last month's meeting. Okay, it's cool. Right, any other questions? I'll put the motion then. Wait, wait a minute, you're on, you're on 7.2, right? Yeah, 7.2. I'd just like to thank Marlena and Kasha for their efforts to try and bring some resolution to some of the answers, just unacceptable. I mean, the one to Kelly and 
here for uh, Memorial Park concept. I mean, it's been there for months and it's just no update, no update, no update. If you're not going to get any answers. Oh, Tanya. Yes. Hey, nice smile. Hello. I'm going to ask you about Memorial Park. Where are we up to? Um, we are, can I just go back a step though, please, to the Omapere Wharf? Oh, okay. So that is, the steps are in there, the construction is, the contracts in the process have been awarded, construction to commence in August, um, three to four month construction time frame. so hopefully finished before Christmas. Great. Okay, how are we going with Memorial Park? Memorial Park, um, I have a couple of things I would just like to discuss with the board um, when, when Jeanette comes back in, actually, it's probably not really for here, but it's um, just the decision around the toilet, please. Unless you want okay, the so conversation here, actually. Okay, so is it, it, so a decision, does that require a decision from the board or a clarification? A clarification. Okay. Oh, oh, oh so, so, so it's, 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 so you're saying that it is appropriate for a workshop, or does it need to be done in a meeting? I don't know, actually. Well, what's, the, what, what's the clarification needed? Um, so we had a plan for a toilet. Um, we spoke with a supplier the other day. So we've got supply issues all over the place, but we spoke with a supplier the other day who has an unfinished order that's sixty percent completed. So that we'll buy off some buy off them, so the order was for somebody else that's no longer purchasing it. Um, so it's not exactly the same, but I just wanted to have a conversation about whether you would be happy to purchase that after looking okay. at the... My gut, my gut feeling, Tanya, is that's an operational issue, but um, I know the board would terribly, terribly like you to make sure that's okay with the planners of the park. I mean, that's park over here. So if, if, you're, if you're bringing in something that is inappropriate, then they'll be able to tell you, right? Okay. You, I would expect, and and I mean, other other than that, I mean, you know, our opinion is always we want good design, um, and we're not we're not going to be stepping in over your toes for operations, which I think this is. Um, so, I guess okay, as long as great. you're, yeah, cool. Thank you. And the rest of it. And the rest, rest of it, we apart. will. We are going back to suppliers now to get prices refreshed. Um, and time frames, and ideally, we'd like to have it completed by Christmas time. Fantastic. Thank you. Any other questions for Tanya? Great stuff. Thanks. Thanks. Oh, are you sick? I'm so sick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. We, look, That's you okay. we would have done all our questions in one go or, or That's see okay. your text and go to bed and come back or something. <laughs> thank Better you. put on my thank mask. You. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, look, go to bed, eh? All right, bye. Okay, thanks, bye. Okay, okay all those in favour? Aye. Anyone against? There it is. Okay, I think that's the end of the meeting. Proper? Thank you, Mike. Okay, um, so we'll have that. We'll close off the close off the um, video. I think Rhonda. Rhonda, could you close?